The Future Sport Podcast is brought to you by 3Advance, developers of sports tech apps that are AI-powered and UX-focused. So if you're looking to create some apps for your startup or your sports biz calls for some artificial or business intelligence, you should check out 3Advance. They're incredible. Go to 3Advance.com. That's the number 3Advance.com. Empire. Twenty twenty. It's the year where betting and broadcasting finally, truly converge. We take a more active role uh, once the producers know what they want to do. Because I mean, nothing will ever beat the human eye or you know the human sense for what is interesting. That's Pervon Rosen, senior product manager at Sport Radar. Big data is ready for the odds makers and the content creators. This is the Future Sport Podcast. I'm Bram Weinstein. Let's move the ball forward. Pervon Rosen will talk about ways the data, gambling, and advanced stats may change how we watch sports down the road. Plus, one of the principal scientists at Amazon, Priya Ponapali, joins us to discuss ways that company is helping leagues serve what their fans want. It all goes hand in hand, right? Which is what CES is all about, and that's where we're going to start. Las Vegas, where the future was now. So CES is done for 2020 after visiting Las Vegas, showing off all of the technology and specifically in the sports world, how they merge. Let's welcome in Sam Gordon from the Las Vegas Review Journal. You want to give us just a quick review of CES the week? How did it go? Yeah, um, first and foremost, Graham, thank you for having me. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity. But but CES was smooth. Uh, it was my first year covering it, and you know that's the biggest convention uh, here in Vegas, and this is the hub of all, you know, all all type of conventions. This is the biggest one with between 175,000 and 200,000 people. So I mean, it was packed, but but uh, tremendous, uh, a lot of tremendous products, a lot of tremendous innovations, uh, especially uh, you know on my end as a, as a sports journalist, especially in sports. So. Uh, uh, really cool to check everything out. There were panels. There was uh, the show floor where different brands and different companies had the chance to unveil their technology. There were different speakers, different things like that. So uh, a little bit of something for there was something for everybody, whoever's interested in tech or, or just has any interest in general, whether it be fitness or health or innovation or anything else. Uh, there's a little bit of something for everybody, and it was really cool to check out. The week was a blur, but, um, again, another successful to see yes in Vegas. Um, let's talk about some of the ones you wrote about specifically that fall into the, the sports category. Obviously, CES covers a lot of different technological advances in a lot of different sectors, but one of them was digital ticketing. And I know the people who are collectors don't want to hear this because they like having it for various reasons, but there's other right. reasons behind this besides you know memorabilia here. This is offering an opportunity to collect a lot of different data, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so of course, there's the convenience thing from the consumer, right? Like, I don't have to worry about losing my ticket. Uh, it, it's it, the exchanging, buying, selling is super easy. You don't have to go down to the physical box office. You don't have to go downtown and park. You don't have to flag down scalpers in, in cold weather and wait, miss the game. It's really, really convenient. The, the ease of use for the, the consumer is fantastic. But, but to your point, it's also let distributors and people who are hosting events or throwing events or whether it be teams or franchises or venues, they know who has the tickets. They know when the tickets are being exchanged, and they have an idea of, of who's where, where they're sitting, what, what's going on. And it allows for, for better security, for better um, – just kind of a better general feel for what the, what the venues uh, – what the event's looking like. And, and we had somebody speak – uh, who's working on the, the SoFi Stadium project, and that was his point, was that, the, hey, this, it, it, it's, it's more efficient not only for you guys, but it's more efficient for us. We're able to know what's going on. We're able to have a better idea what's going on so that in case something does happen, in case we do need to prepare, we're, we're going to be more prepared to handle whatever comes our way. So uh, I thought that was fascinating. You don't really think about that. I yeah. mean, if you're going to a game, if you're, being really, really, if, you're, if you're going to a game or if you're um, – a consumer or something like that you don't really think about that but it makes more sense on their end as well as opposed to selling paper tickets where they can change hands you never know who's coming in you never know when where where people are going to be sitting so a much more efficient process for everybody involved 
Um, the other part, too, is for the fans who aren't going to the games and are watching, um, the enhancements of the viewing experience are exploding in many different yeah. ways. And so the processing of data and new real-time stats and AI and VR and all this stuff, that seems to be a big touch point at CES this year, too. Yeah, it definitely was. And we know, I mean, you know, as sports guys, we know kind of about the analytics revolution, how analytics are shaping um, every sport, decision-making, roster, construction, all those things. But they're also, like you said, they're also shaping the viewing experience. And um, one of the examples at CES was, was in the PGA, how before cell phones, I mean, they weren't really a thing on the golf course, right? You didn't want – nobody want, none of the players wanted somebody's phone going off. Keep them on silent. Don't take them out. Pictures, all that. But the PGA, for example, has really embraced technology, and now they have kind of laser tracking of the golf ball and the courses are all mapped out where you can follow along on your phone or from a media perspective, I can follow along from the media room and see exactly where the ball is, exactly where everybody's at, how many yards they have on their approach, how many feet the putt, the putt is, what the angles are like, what the slopes like. It makes it so much easier to follow, especially a sport like golf where the ball is so small and the course is so big. Um, it can allow – uh, consumers, people who are watching these events, uh, it gives them better information, kind of a better understanding of what's going on. And we see that across other sports as well. In baseball, now you've got the launch angle, uh, the, the, the speed of the home run as it travels off the bat. You have, I mean, with the Fox box or, or whatever, that's nothing new with the, the strike zone. But now you're seeing where guys are more efficient as hitters right right on, right on the plate at, at the time. Uh, I've seen, uh, I've watched a couple basketball games this year where they've experimented with, um, kind of hot spots as well, where you know, player X, let's go with James Harden, for example, is more efficient at this part of the court and actually has it when he has the ball, has the percentages of where he shoots. So it helps consumers kind of understand the, the game better or what's, what's positive for their team or what's positive for whatever team in general while they're watching. And you have to imagine, like you said, it's exploded. That, that, that's the right word. It's exploded in the past few years. What's it going to look like in a few years from now when, it's, when there's going to be even more data accessible, more ways to kind of convey that to fans? So um, really, really interesting and, and things that uh, we, I'm, not going to say, I'm not going to say we take for granted. I definitely don't think we take it for granted, but it's implemented. Some of these things are implemented so subtly that we don't even realize how much they're enhancing our viewing experience. But the more information, the better. It allows for the more intelligent fan, a more fluid fan, per se. That was kind of one of the, uh, the lines of the week at the sports panels fluid fan it allows fans to feel like they have a little bit more agency over their experience um the last one i want to ask you about is um is esports um which is not a new yeah. topic here and and obviously has been exploding but it what is clearly it is not a fad um what were the industry leaders saying about what's coming next down the pike for esports well uh, esports i mean like you said nothing new but esports what it is it's the first kind of digital it's a it's a spectator sport that's strictly digital right you there are people coming into these venues, paying money, watching people play video games. And uh, we had Zach, Zach Leonsis in with – he's with uh, Monumental Sports. His dad, Ted, owns the Washington Wizards, Washington Capitals, Washington Mystics, among others. And they're one of the leading organizations in terms of the esports revolution. And they launched a franchise uh, a few months ago, I believe the fourth quarter of, of 2019. And he was saying, look, we, we view these gamers as they're pro athletes. We're trying to get them the same training, the same nutrition, the same resources for their development as Bradley Beal or Alex Ovechkin is getting. And that that really kind of spoke to how serious kind of what kind of market there is for esports. I mean, I know with some of the streaming platforms like um, Twitch, I mean, you got millions of people who are watching the professional gamers play games. And you, you have thousands of people packing venues. So that is very much looked at now as a live sport and a spectator sport. And you, I think you're going to start to see franchises kind of adapt and, and understand that hey, this is going to be we're going to we're going to add this component to what we already bring to the table. Our ownership groups, like the way um, the Leonsis family of Monumental Sports is, is doing now, that that not only not only is I mean that is a live sport that's totally based on on tech and and, and kind of technological advancement. So uh, definitely a big market there, and I think we're only going to see it grow. I think we're only talking about the tip of the iceberg. Sam Gordon from the Las Vegas Review Journal. Thank you, Sam. Thanks, Graham. Appreciate you. Up next, Pervon Rosen from Sport Radar on what the broadcasters think their fans crave. This is the Future Sport Podcast.
Our guest this week is Pervon Rosen, who is the Senior Product Manager of Broadcast at Sport Radar. With all of the broadcast changes that are coming down the road, let's catch up with what it's going to look like. Hey, Per, how are you? Thanks for joining us. Oh, I'm great, Bram. Thank you. Thank you. How are you? I'm great. Let's, um, let's just start simply with what Sport Radar does. Right. So Sport Radar, we are a global data company. So you know, we collect and we commoditize data and, you know, that we give out to whoever needs it in the ecosystem of sports. Uh, it could be broadcasters, could be newspapers, websites, web applications. Uh, you know, whoever it is out there who needs sports data can get it through us. And is it focused on gambling? Is it fo- focused on just general statistics? How would you describe what the content is that you're providing? Right. So for Radar, we have both you know, the betting focused data points, uh, which is low latency, very quick goal scored, et cetera, that you need to, you know, to calculate odds and, and level your books. Uh, but then we also have the side of the business where I work, which is the media side where, you know, we really want to collect all the context around an event uh, in a sports game. So we can actually tell proper storylines around it. So, you know, there's a touchdown in the NFL. You don't only want to know who threw it and to who and how how long the ball or how far the ball traveled. You know, you also want to know the context of down and distance uh, all the way down to really what temperature it is at the stadium at the time. So that's the media business that I represent. So let's talk about television of the future or or whatever form that looks like, content production um, when it comes to sports. Um, Can you give a general overview of what you think the changes are going to look like as all of these different sets of data are sent back to broadcasters to be utilized to showcase an event? Yes, for sure. So uh, let me start with how it traditionally have looked like before. So uh, I've been in broadcast for around 18 years. Uh, I started on the ground as a graphics operator pretty much creating graphical overlays based on things that I read in newspapers or I was told by a producer who researched it himself. And then I would just write it in manually. And, you know, I think it's, it's the research part of that story that I'm talking about. It, 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 you know, it takes a lot of effort to do so. Read newspapers, go on websites, um, and then obviously create it manually uh, in the TV truck. And I think what's, what's happening now is that all of the broadcasters, you know, there's so many games, uh, there's so much, um, you know, there's so much that needs to get on air and people want to tell the deeper stories that the data providers uh, like ourselves, you know, we are being challenged by these broadcasters, broadcasters to create better systems where they can find the storylines and where we can suggest the storylines. So, so I guess what I'm saying is really that the, the position as a data provider is changing from just sitting on the commodity of raw oil, and now we're being asked to provide, you know, ev- the, the cars that utilize the gas that comes out of it. Um, so it's really using technology, using the cloud technology, uh, using machine learning just to, to use the data and create value from it rather than just passing it along and saying, here's all the data points, here's everything that happened in all these games, now you go figure it out. So that's interesting. For us to support the broadcasters to tell the story. It's interesting. It's, it's a different dichotomy. I was at ESPN for a number of years. The way it worked was on any of the shows that we were on, um, it was produced by the literal producers. We would then go to the statistic department and ask them to help us build things as we're telling the stories as we saw them. Are you kind of suggesting that this is getting inverted a little bit, that the statistics providers are going back to the producers saying you really ought to do the show about this as opposed to them coming to you? Right. So I I don't want to say that we're going back and saying this is how you should do the show because that's obviously still going to be on the producers. It's more saying that, hey, you're doing a show about what? Tell us that. And then, you know, they come back and say, hey, we want to produce a story, a a show about Drew Brees' uh, career. Uh, and then from there, we pull out interesting storylines that we just push back and say, hey, here's something you can bring up. Hey, here's something you can bring up. Or do you want to know more about this? 
this is actually something we see. So it's more that we take a more active role uh, once the producers know what they want to do. Because, I mean, nothing will ever beat the human eye or, you know, the human sense for what is interesting. But we can utilize technology and data to support everything that the producers and, you know, the people on the ground are, are sensing is important. I, uh, I think that's what I'm saying. It's yeah. More, yeah, I didn't mean to oversimplify it, yeah. but it, but it is interesting that like there yeah. is a different communication basis as like we used to start with the the producers determined what it was going to be. We asked for support. It's an interesting change if yeah. the data providers are coming back saying, I would think about this as being the backbone of what you're talking about. Yeah, no, for sure. And I think that that's really something that, you know, we've noticed and it's being asked for by the broadcasters. Um, and I think it really comes from the fact that all the content that is being created today, you know, with all of the different outlets that are out there, you know, it's not only linear TV anymore that's asking for content. You know, I think right about when I started in graphics, right, uh, we would go, instead of just going for halftime break, you know, we, as it was in the beginning, you just kind of sit quietly and take a breath. All of a sudden, then you're going on air on a screen or a second screen. So it's a whole show you have to produce then for the internet, uh, which just puts a, puts a whole other pressure on creating, uh, you know, lots and lots of content. So I think that's where that change is coming from. Um, there's always someone asking for more. And us as a stat provider, we just need to step up and, and take that role and help out. So we've heard a lot about second screen. A lot of it has to do with gaming or gambling or whatever is coming and depends on legalities of jurisdictions as things change here in the United States. Um, as you hear second screen from broadcasters, what do, you they, what do you think they mean by that and what are they actually looking for to present to viewers? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, when, I first, when I first started working, second screen, screen was kind of thought of just something to fill a void just to put something out there um, and it was seen as oh it's, it's just going on on the internet or it's just a stream but it's changed a lot now to where you know the second screen experience needs to almost beat the linear experience so when you say second screen to me now what I think is is you know highly specialized content for you know a very educated uh, audience because the way I think about it is that whoever chooses to watch that second screen or go to that second screen has a very specific interest in it. Um, so that means you need to serve those people. So, I mean, we, there's been, you know, um, experiments with highly, you know, statistic-focused broadcasts. Uh, I know, for instance, ESPN did that with Major League Baseball and StatCast data that we now have at Sport Radar, um, you know, to support that going even further analytical so that's what i think it's just very specialized content that you know just needs to be very high quality for for those viewers so here where i am in washington where i'm based um the local regional network that did the redskins preseason game started doing a second screen that had predictive gaming in it um they the same group has done stuff with the Washington Wizards. Um, we are hearing about predictive gaming things that happened with the St. Louis Blues and a number of different teams around um, the country as they try to find new ways to engage and incorporate gaming and gambling. Um, what are they looking for? If they come to you and say, we want to build something here, what are they looking for? Right, so we actually, uh, for, uh, we work with NBC Washington for the Wizards effort, and it's been a very interesting path. Um, we started with them about a little bit, uh, I would say it's almost a year ago where we started working. And, you know, the first ask they just, they just came to us with was, do you have odds? Uh, because we know that you work with, with sports gambling and betting. And we said, yeah, we have odds for sure. Uh, is there anything else we can help you with? And what they really is after is just betting content and betting data that is understandable for, for, you know, uh, a person who's never really been exposed to it um, so they can you know figure it out as they go and see what actually works and I know that that this particular broadcaster they've worked really hard with you know sending user surveys out to people who's been watching the stream to understand what is good and what is bad and the predictive gaming here has proved really valuable 
just to ease them in to understand that what it is you're actually trying to do when you place a bet. You know, it's not only about winning money or losing money. It's actually about what do you think is going to happen in this game, and that makes it interesting, and that will drive rating in the end. Um, so that, that's how I look upon that. How are these kind of first runs at this going? Like, what, what is the reaction in the marketplace to trying these things out, whether it be with the Wizards or other teams around the country? I think the reactions have been very positive uh, just from the fact that it's, it's a very interesting format with the predictive gaming, and it's, it's a very appreciated format because it's not going super heavy sports betting like you can see uh, in similar formats from Europe where it's all about you know the, the, the odds and the spreads and the totals, etc. It's, it's actually entertaining, and it brings more in-depth questions. And I happen to know that here, you know, there's, there's a lot of uh, producers involved that actually are putting this content forth, again, to, to make it interesting to this specialized viewership that, that knows what they're watching, and they, want, and they, you know, they even are searching for knowledge, so they want to learn more. Um, so the education process is what's really been appreciated. Um, where do you see gambling content going? And I know that's a vague question based on all the different laws in the different jurisdictions around the country right now as things kind of shake out. Um, but give a general sense of where you see that going when it comes to broadcast presentation. I think broadcast presentation, I think it will follow the formula that that it is around the world already. I don't see it being particularly different from the U.S. once the market matures. Uh, so, you know, it's not going to be everywhere, and, but it's also not going to be nowhere. It's going to be accompanying, you know, daily results. You'll see here's the odds for this game. Uh, you will also see, uh, you know, in, in the tickers, you'll see it in the graphics overlays. Uh, you'll see talents addressing it online if there's something you know particular interesting there to speak about it will just be a second or i mean not a second source but it will be another source of content that you can bring up and speak about uh, and you know for me I, i'm european myself uh, i grew up in sweden and i always had betting around me yeah and even though i i was never really a big gambler i never really placed a lot of bets but i would still listen in on when the talent or whoever is talking about the odds and talking about probabilities because I understood that, you know, it brings a sense of where this game is going. Um, you know, if all of a sudden the odds are down for my favorite team to win, I understand that they're doing well. You know, sometimes you understand that on your own by them being up 5-0 and, you know, there's literally no payout if you place a bet now for them to win. But, you know, there's, there's certain events throughout the game that also will affect those odds that will be coming through from us at Sport Radar. Um, you know, so it's, it's, it's entertaining. It's entertaining to, to kind of always think about what's the next probable outcome, uh, which, you know, odds represent in the end. Yeah. I, I mean, it's a completely different conversation, but I, I always wonder what people who grew up in Europe and are sports fans, uh, how they view the American viewpoint on this, which has been essentially to – um, place it in a box and not open it up. Uh, it's just really, it's just a completely different right. dichotomy of thought. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it, it is very interesting. And being here the whole time is, you know, it's interesting about the conversation about, you know, the integrity worries and concerns and such where, you know, for me, I mean, it's, it's entertainment. It's, it's, it's content. It's something you can actually use in your broadcast. It's something that will retain viewers. It's something that will spark interest. You know, it's, it's, it's um, you know, and, you place a couple of dollars and then all of a sudden you're interested in it, you know, and then yeah. you listen in what the town has to say. And once in a while, you'll even pick up more information that you maybe were looking for from the beginning. Pervon Rosen is the senior product manager of broadcast at Sport Radar. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Brad. Up next, Priya Panapali from Amazon on their perspective on what fans want from stats and information. This is the Future Sport Podcast. So let's take a minute here to thank our friends at 3 Advance. These guys are ranked one of the nation's top app developers, but that's not all. 
They've helped grow a bunch of sports tech startups like Team Builder, T-Box Tour, and In-Game Fantasy. But they're also experts in user experience, cloud APIs, and artificial intelligence. So if you're looking for a dev partner to bring your future sport tech to life, look these guys up. Go to 3advance.com. They're the team to make it happen. At Advance, you will. That's the number 3advance.com. And tell them Future Sport sent you. So good morning, Bram, and, and thank you so much for having me. I'm Priya Punapali. I'm a senior manager and a principal scientist on the Amazon ML Solutions Lab team. And my team works with AWS customers um, across various industries and helps them accelerate their machine learning adoption. And uh, we're working with some of the largest sports organizations in the world, uh, including the NFL and Formula One, um, LA Clippers, MLB, and many more. And I'm super excited to speak with you about how our customers are using machine learning to shape the future of sports. And we're excited to talk to you about that. Um, can you be somewhat specific? How do they work with you? So we're seeing sports organizations worldwide looking to innovate the fan experience, and they're embracing technologies such as machine learning. And uh, you know we're working uh, with uh, some of the largest sports organizations. Um, like I can share a few examples. Uh, the NFL, for example, uses our flagship machine learning platform, Amazon SageMaker, to power next-gen stats, which is their solution to track complex data on the field, uh, including player location, their speed and movement patterns. And uh, you know, AWS and NFL are really transforming the way football is analyzed, played, coached, and experienced. Um, another example is Formula One racing. F1 uses Amazon SageMaker to train deep learning models with um, over 65 years of historical race data. And uh, they're looking to give fans an insight into split second decisions and strategies adopted by teams and drivers. Um, yet another example is NASCAR. So NASCAR is leveraging our computer vision platform, Amazon Recognition, and they're doing this to auto tag video frames with all sorts of metadata, you know, including identifying the driver, the car, sponsors, and, and so on. And, um, uh, you know, that, that's Major League Baseball. Uh, that's, you know, and baseball is an extremely data-driven driven sport, and they're using SageMaker to deliver new real-time stats during broadcasts like stolen base success probability and shift impact and matchup analysis. So let's go back to the NFL for a moment. <clears throat> Since Amazon is working directly with the league and, and streaming some games now on, on Thursday night, are you talking about working with the league to enhance the broadcast? We are. So, you know, we're working uh, with the NFL on next gen stats on uh, helping to officiate the game. Uh, you know, this uh, next gen stats, they're sent to the broadcast booth for additional insights and to equip the talent with storytelling. Uh, these, these next gen stats, they're automatically streamed into graphics to improve both the fan experience um, uh, in, through broadcast as well as in second screen. And the speed, security, and reliability of the AWS cloud services have been critical for this. And how about for specific teams? Are you working with them to help re-engage with a younger fan base? We are working with a number of sports teams, uh, you know, across um, uh, various sports. And in all of these cases, you know, we start with the customers' use cases and their top priorities, and we work backwards from there to come up with a detailed list of use cases that we can help by, uh, you know, partnering uh, with them and, uh, you know, developing uh, machine learning solutions using our extensive portfolio of AI ML services. So um, you have all this data and you've got all this information and you're, you're giving it back to the leagues or the teams as they try to cultivate new fans or enhance the experience for all of their previous fans. Um, what are you finding out about fans? What do they want? So fans want to get a deeper understanding of the game. Uh, they, they love the data that's being streamed to them. Um, they want real-time stats that could uh, 
predict what's going to happen next. They want to be able to engage in, uh, you know, who's, who, what's the win probability looking like? Um, you know, what, what's the chances of the runner successfully stealing uh, second base? So, so they want the deeper um, insight and they want it both through their broadcast feeds as well as in second screen. What's your background? Are you a big sports fan? Is that how you got into this? So I have had an interesting journey in machine learning. Um, I started off in my PhD doing machine learning for genomics, and uh, I've since, you know, applied it to uh, problems in finance and healthcare. And uh, one of the things that I'm most passionate about is making it available to all industries across geography, so the democratization of this technology. And I love sports because it's just such a fantastic medium to bring the benefits of machine learning to life. Um, and yeah, I love sports. What is the, um, what's the next step for you all? What are you, what are you guys working on that will be coming out down the road? So we're working with um, uh, NextGen Stats to continue to roll out uh, uh, new use cases throughout the 2020 season and uh, expand the AWS initiative to include really transformative use cases that push the boundaries of what's happening with uh, what's possible with AI and machine learning. Uh, we're also working across a spectrum of different uh, sports. You know, we're at the team level, we're working with the LA Clippers. The LA Clippers use our AI ML technology with Second Spectrum, which is NBA's official video tracking technology provider. And uh, there, you know, again, we're revolutionizing the way sports uh, uh, fans uh, watch the game and we put the fans in control with uh, the Clippers Code Vision. Um, we're working with uh, uh, NASCAR on, uh, you know, uh, giving fans new insights. Uh, we're working with Swimming Australia, uh, which is Australia's peak body for swimming, um, to really optimize at athlete performance at critical junctions of the race. Um, we're working in, in rugby. We're working with the Six Nations Championship. Um, they're going to use um, AI and ML technology for predictive analytics uh, and to provide new insights into the game. So working across a broad spectrum of use cases, uh, you know, given our success with the NFL and other sports so far, we're seeing a lot of sports customers uh, flock to AWS for their machine learning needs. One about racing. I'm, I'm curious about auto racing because there seems to be just a mountain of data that could be coming in from a live race. And maybe it's not different than the NFL, but it feels like it, it would be with all of the different criteria that would be happening in real time. Um, how do you help that league siphon down this information and make it um, palatable for a consumer? So Formula One is, uh, you know, one of the highest class of auto racing uh, sanctioned by the FIA. And they have some of the fastest and most advanced cars. And uh, you know, during the race, uh, each car has about 120 sensors and is generating over three gigabytes of data um, every second. So um, in combination uh, with uh, uh, Amazon Kinesis, which is a product used to collect, process, and analyze streaming real-time data, uh, we are using SageMaker to detect how a driver is performing uh, mid-ride so during the race, and we're giving fans access to the inner workings of their favorite teams and drivers. So um, we have, uh, for example, um, overtake probability, which uh, during the race, uh, during a, a car battle between two drivers, predicts the probability of a driver successfully um, overtaking. And uh, there's, there's another new stat called pit stop advantage, uh, which predicts uh, what's the advantage a driver has by taking a pit stop um, at any given time during the race. So we're combining um, in real time uh, telemetry data with a lot of data coming from the car and the race and, and the pits and, and giving fans this insight. Dr. Potapali, thank you so much for taking the time today. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Yes, thank you. That will do it for us this week. As always, the future is now. This is the Future Sport Podcast. I'm Bram Weinstein. The Future Sport Podcast is brought to you by Three Advanced, developers of sports tech apps that are AI-powered and UX-focused. 
So if you're looking to create some apps for your startup or your sports biz calls for some artificial or business intelligence, you should check out 3 Advance. They're incredible. Go to 3advance.com. That's the number 3advance.com.